So the thing is, um, I want us to show these errors right here. So I opened up Bootstrap again, the documentation, and clicked on Components Alerts. So there are a couple of alerts here, but I want one with a close button down here. So uh, it's under dismissing here. So it looks something like this and with a dismiss button over here. So let me copy this code, just copy to clipboard and write um, in this div right here after my school. Let me come back here and see what's, which place is the best to do this. I think after add a user here, Now the thing is, you could add these errors under each of these items like I mentioned, but that's not what we'll do here. I will add them right under here. So I'll do this like so. So instead of all this, I'll just say error, errors like that. Okay, and I will put maybe a break tag here so that the errors start here. I'll leave that just so we can see how that looks like. So click, and here we have the errors. So it says errors, you should check in some errors. But I chose this one so the user can click close, so it can close, but it doesn't seem to be working at all. So let's change a few things here. Type button, uh, true, true, true. Hmm. Let's see here. If I add a class of button and say button uh, danger, something like this. Let's see how that will look like. So submit. Okay, so there's a close button there. Not really what I would like, uh, but let's try button small just to uh, make sure we make it smaller. Maybe that's better. Okay. Or we could change this to a span instead. So I'll just uh, say span like this. So it doesn't look like a button really. Oh, it still looks like a button, look at that. I think that's because of the classes. So you can choose to keep it like that or make it something like this if you want to. Um, let's see, type button. Let's see if that has an effect on it. Uh, back here, submit. Okay, so if the type is button, at least it has a hand like that. Okay, which is good. Now, if we click, it doesn't close. But uh, that's the same issue we had in the beginning because they changed the namespaces. So let's put BS here like that, which BS really describes what they did here. It's total BS. But let's click here and let's see if we click there, it disappears. Okay, so that's good. Now that is only working because of the JavaScript in the footer section, the uh, bootstrap JavaScript. So if it's not working, then that JavaScript isn't working either. Now we don't want this to show immediately we load the page. So we're going to use an if statement here. I'm going to copy that. We don't need this anymore. So right about here, I am going to say uh, PHP tag and say if uh, count like so, and let's put the errors is greater than zero. And let's do this, close. Mm -hmm. If that is true, then it means, let's put an end if before we forget, close that as well. It means we do have errors and so we can display this. And then at the same time, we want to loop through here to get all the um, errors right from here. So with that break tag present, I will do this. Okay, and do a for each loop. I'll copy this, paste it here. Copy that, paste it here. Push this in a little. And so I'm going to use a for each. So 
for each like that so in for each that's good the for each will have errors as error of course and then right here we'll echo the error so just say error close that tag all righty then that looks perfect let's give it a shot so bam passwords do not match so this is the only error we have here if i remove the rank and add you see rank is not valid uh gender is not valid if i try to put numbers here and there we have problems only letters allowed in the first name only letters allowed in the last name etc etc i don't know why this isn't going all the way here that's weird it's leaving too much space here for whatever reason i do not know um, maybe we can reduce the padding just by doing p0 maybe something like this i hope that works let's try again okay that's much better but zero is a bit too powerful let's put one i don't know why it doesn't go all the way here add okay that's still good right so you get all these errors here if i click there i can close them and let me remove that let me also remove this let's select an actual agenda and an actual rank and let's add one more time so we see one more error now here we are done with everything here so we can use this template exactly for the login page but let's make sure that now we can actually sign up so since everything is working fine here what i need to do is go to the sign up controller and right here is to insert now there's a slight problem here we're going to see it but uh, let's insert anyway so i'm just going to say user insert okay hmm. now right here on the uh, post uh, let's create an array where we're going to choose the information to add so i'll say here array because we don't want to add everything that's in the post because we have password two for example so we don't need that so i'm just going to say first name now we can make this uh, thing more intelligent than this by giving it a list of uh, items, a, a list of uh, columns to add so that even though we add extra columns, they will be ignored. But that will add more code to our system. Uh, you can let me know if you want us to do it that way, then we can add more code. Let's change this to last name let me change this to gender and then we need uh, rank yeah and then we need password okay great now let's check what more we need let me come to here and let's go to school db and let's go to users okay so here we need a few more things we need the school id and we need the um, user id we need the date so some of these can be added like date so let's see date and let's create a date here real quick so i'm just going to say date same format y M D H I S for the time and another thing we need is to hash the password so here we're going to use password hash like so okay so we just replace that with a string the string with this like so okay so password will add the hash version of the password so once we do that, um, the only thing remaining is the school ID and the uh, user ID. Now on that, I want us to generate a very random number. Okay. And also one more thing that we uh, did not consider 
is if I go to my user here, we are not checking to see if the email exists or not. So we're going to see how to do that as well. So back here for now, everything is all good. And let's try an insert. So let's do the array. So we will ignore everything else for now. So back here and let's give it a try. So password out here, password two out here. So everything looks good. Then let's add the user. Password must be at least eight characters long. So how many are these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what is the problem? So it's saying string length data password is less than or wait, if it's less than or equal to eight, look at that. So let me remove the equal sign. Uh -huh. Now it's going to work. Boom. Okay. So here it's telling me unknown column password. Really? Oh, look at that. We never created the password column. Who knew, you know, things like this. So let me go to the structure and let's choose where I can create the password. I can actually add it anywhere. So let's click go and let's add password. I can't believe I forgot the password. Let's put 255 because we don't know what the hash length will be and click save. Okay, so now we can go back to browse and we have a password column. So let's try that again and refresh and resend. Okay, so it seems things worked out. If we click browse, we see that we have a hashed password here and the only thing missing is the user ID and school ID. Now these two require special attention. So we're going to do that in the next video while we also fix the issue of um, where is the email though? Wow, look at that. Wait a second, there's no email here? Wow, this is uh, awesome. So how did it work without the email? Let's go to the sign up. So we didn't add the email here. That's why it, it didn't complain. So let me just do that. Email, okay. Hmm, very interesting. So before we go, let's add that email uh, column. Let me go to last name. We click here and say after last name. Go. Let's put that email and variable character 100 in length and save. Now, because we're going to be using uh, searching for the email, we're going to add an index there and OK. Okay, that's looking more like a user's uh, table here. Okay, very nice. So now when we come back, we do the sign up again, but this time we're going to add a user ID and check if an email exists or not. I'll see you in the next video.